Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Kingdom Transformation Network's Morning Prayer. I am your host, Coach Shaiteria Jones, your spiritual midwife, helping you to see you as Jesus Christ sees you. Here at Kingdom Transformation, we are the bridge that connects identity, purpose, and destiny. Because when you know who you are, you can passionately pursue purpose. And when you passionately pursue purpose, you can occupy the place called destiny. Here at Kingdom Transformation, self-care is soul care. So when you take care of the very depths of your soul, you can live the quality of life that Jesus Christ died for you to live. Third John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And oftentimes we are not experiencing the prosperity that Jesus Christ purchased for us because the state of our mind, will, and our emotions are in disarray. Our appetites and our desires are dysfunctional, and therefore we are unable to obtain what belongs to us. And so I help you to be able to See beyond what you are experiencing in order to receive in you what belongs to you. Uh, the word says that we are already blessed with all spiritual blessings. And oftentimes uh, when we don't realize that the blessings are ours, there are angels on assignment unto us waiting uh, to give us uh, what has already been released to us. Um, and since we don't know how to obtain it, we go through life lacking. It tells us in the word that we are to lack no good thing, right? We are to have all things. The peace of God fills us with everything that we need. In the peace of God, there's nothing missing and nothing broken. And the word of God says that the kingdom of heaven is not in meat and drink, but it is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It is in the complete picture that is painted for us in God. We have access to the kingdom of God, to the kingdom of heaven, and in the kingdom is everything that we will ever need. And oftentimes we don't experience everything that we will ever need because we are unable um, to clearly hear what it is that God is saying to us through his word. Oftentimes Jesus would say, uh, those who have ears to hear, let them hear um, those who have eyes to see, let them see. And so we have to be a people with ears to hear and eyes to see. We have to be a people who are connected to our God in such a way where we are able to benefit from what he has for us. And so we are in a new series, a new prayer series called Taking My Life Back. And you have been instructed uh, to come with a particular area of your life where you have um had struggles and where you know that God wants to resurrect it. It's an area where you know God wants to bring it back. And if you are uh, new to the room, um, I want you to ask Holy Spirit right now, what is something in your life that has died? What is something um, that was uh, released before his time, right? Because we see in the Bible, there was Lazarus who was raised from the dead. There was the widow's son who was raised from the dead. Um, there was the centurion servant who was on the verge of death. There was the 12 year old girl who was raised from the dead. And these are just the examples of those who Jesus himself raised from the dead while he walked in the earth realm. But in his death, he um, was able to ensure that we don't have to experience those things. And what do I mean by that? There will be some things that will die, right? But we have the opportunity to go before him and say, listen, you made me this promise concerning this and we can see some things resurrected and even in the old testament god had ezekiel prophesy to to the dry bones to the valley of dry bones and he asked can this can these bones live and and ezekiel said god you know and oftentimes there are things that uh, we leave prematurely. There are things that die prematurely in our lives that God never intended for us to experience in that way. And this series about taking our life back is about changing our perspective concerning what belongs to us and changing how we respond to what is ours. Because often we have a passive mindset where we say, you know, if God wants me to have it, he'll just give it to me. 
But this series was birthed out of an understanding that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. We must understand that as a people of purpose, we have to violently go after what belongs to us. Good morning, Wanda. Not that we are violently pursuing people, but that we are violently pursuing the promises of God that are ours, understanding that the enemy of our soul, if he waged war against God himself, and he knew who God was because he guarded his throne. He just wanted his position and he acted foolishly because lust was raised up on the inside of him. If he knowing who God was would respond to God that way who are we that he won't respond to us that way he no longer has a place in heaven therefore he is looking to take our place he is looking to have what he can no longer have and so this series was birthed out of understanding that from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force and that is matthew chapter 11 verse 12 and then revelation chapter 12 verses 7 through 12 um tell us this that and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The reason the enemy is harassing you, the reason the enemy is persecuting your soul is because he understands he has but a short time. And if he can get you out of where you belong, he can obtain what belongs to you. You yourself are a treasure right you yourself are a treasure and when you understand that you have been treasured by god and as a treasure there is wars being waged for your soul you will begin to fight differently and when you fight differently you will win differently you will win and you will see that the winning had already been pinned in the books of heaven concerning you. Oftentimes we forfeit things in our lives because we don't believe the truth of the matter is that we have already won because of what was done on the cross. And so uh, we are in this series and we are on day seven. Day one, we looked at dealing with rejection, understanding that oftentimes we are rehearsing being rejected more than we have actually been rejected. And if the enemy of your soul can get you to live in the realm of rejection, he can rob you of destiny. He can steal from you your purpose. The word of God tells us that we are to occupy until God comes. But if we are preoccupied with rejection, with the residue of what it has done to us, we will never realize what belongs to us right and so if you have been preoccupied with being rejected you will remain in the place of rejection even though god has accepted you oftentimes we remain in the place of rejection when we have been accepted by god day two we looked at overcoming abandonment understanding that jesus himself was forsaken so that we won't have to be forsaken the word talks about how um a a nursing mother it, it, it poses the question, can a nursing mother forget her child? And, and as we looked at how the body of a nursing mother reminds her that she has a child who nurses, um, it is evident that God cannot forget us, right? He can't forget us because he... Um, has engraved us upon his hands he has um remembered us in him and we talked about triumphing over trauma understanding that the enemy of our soul wants to get us into a place where we don't realize that as the bride of christ as we persist in um to the marriage supper and and all that we do on a daily basis is us uh processing in to the marriage supper is us being prepared for the one who's coming back for us right he's because he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle he's coming back for one 
who knows how to um, work the works of him who sent um, or of he who has sent them, right? And so um, what we looked at is understanding that as those who triumph over trauma, we are processing in as the bride of Christ. We are processing in as winners in the army of God. We looked at dealing with the death of deceit. Deceit always has come to kill, steal, and to destroy. It brings death in the midst. And oftentimes, uh, we willingly participate in deception. And then other times, um, we are deceived into uh, the belief of a thing. But when we allow the word of God to displace darkness, we will see the truth of God's word reigning supreme in every area of our lives. Then we looked at on day five, managing the mess of mistakes. Now you can be your mistakes if you want, because the word says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so if you begin to constantly meditate upon your mistakes, you will become what you are trying to leave. But if you look at your mistakes and say, you know what, they don't define me because I'm not going to think on them constantly, but I'm going to fill myself with the word of God so I can live like the word told me to live. You will change the trajectory of your life. Yesterday, we looked at throwing off the weight of worry, understanding that sin itself is weighty. Therefore, uh, worry is weighty. And you can either worry or worship, but you can't do both. If you are worrying, you are entering into the worship of Satan. But if you are worshiping God, if, if you are entering into the realm where you allow God to be enthroned in your praises, you will see him show up in a way that is more speedily than you are used to experiencing. And oftentimes, we don't experience the speediness of God because we are locked up in the in the worrying stage we are locked up in the place where we are worshiping the enemy and so today we are going to look at restraining the resistance of rebellion we are going to look at shutting down that enemy of our soul that is looking to come against us and so our focal scripture for today comes from James chapter 4 verse 7 and it says submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you you were not created to resist God you were created to live in submission to God as his creation any rebellion that is operating in your life is there in order to get you out of the perfect will of God. In your youth, you may have prided yourself on being a rebel. And taking that stand, you opened yourself up for the activity of rebellion to come into your life. You were not created to stand against the plans and purposes of God. You were created to cooperate and agree with God. When you see that your ability to cooperate and agree with God has been impacted, you know that rebellion is actively operating in your life. The great news is that you can take your life back by restraining the resistances that rebellion brings to your life. The way that you restrain the resistance of rebellion in your life is by repenting for the agreement that you once walked in with rebellion. You also need to repent for agreeing with witchcraft. Uh, the word lets us know that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23. Once you repent, you want to make sure that you are aware of the behavior that you are engaging in. Are the activities that you are saying yes to activities that bring glory to God's name? Or are they activities that push you away from God? God wants you to take delight in following the instructions that he lays out for you. When you learn to take delight in the things of God, you will see your life change for the better. The ways of God will always produce greatness in you, for you, and around you. Psalm 37 and 4 in the KJV says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. What is preventing you from delighting in God? Whatever is preventing you from taking delight in God is also preventing you from receiving the desires of your heart. If you want to see your prayers come to pass, you must discover what is causing you to live in rebellion to the word of God. If you want to see your children on the right path, you must discover what's causing you to live in rebellion to the word of God. If you want to see your marriage restored, you want to discover what is causing you to live in rebellion to God's word. No matter what the area is in your life that is preventing, that is presenting itself as a challenge before you, in God, you can discover the presence of rebe rebellion and evict it from your life once and for all. 
God wants to see your life become everything that he wrote that it would be. In order for that to happen, you need to cooperate with God fully. Today, I challenge you to stand up as one who is not afraid to seek the face of the Father and ask him how rebellion is causing you to stumble. Do not be afraid to engage in this conversation with God because whatever he says to you will change your life. I'm going to pray the prayer starter and then I will pray as the Lord leads. Lord, we do not want to rebel against you, but daily we rise up as your opposers when we are living in the sin of fear. Lord, we want to walk in fear of you and not in the fear of our enemy or man. Lord, we know that we need you to restore our souls. Today we cry out, restore us from this broken state so that we can stop resisting you. Your word says to submit to you and resist the devil and he will flee from us. Instead of obeying your word, we have done the opposite. We have submitted to the ways of darkness and our own wicked desires and we have resisted you. Lord, help us to change our ways so that we can live in your presence continually. In your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, we want the fullness of joy that you purchased for us, and we want the pleasure that you want to give to us. Show us how to obey you so that we can enjoy you and all that you have for us. We admit that we have been looking out for our own agenda instead of making your agenda our agenda so that you can make our agenda your agenda. Lord, kill rebellion in us so that we can live in you and serve you with every ounce of who we are. Oh God, we admit that there have been stumbling blocks along the way that we have uh, willingly participated with, oh God. We have willingly engaged in it, oh Father God, thinking that it was going to elevate us to places and spaces uh, where we felt like we would enjoy it. But we bless your holy name on today for bringing us into the uh, revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. We bless you in the name of Jesus that we don't have to live in the realm of waywardness, but we can rise up as those who believe you and dominate where you have assigned us to, oh God. Lord, our minds, oh Father God, have been heavy as we have uh, uh, been dealing with the rebellious acts of our past, oh God. They have constantly come to uh, uh, bring us worry and they have constantly come to make us feel like we can't have what you have promised us but today we say no more to being tormented by our past today we say no more oh father god to being tugged away from our future today we say no more oh father god to being a people who are unable to clearly hear you and receive from you. But we want the more that you have for us, oh God. We want the abundance that's in store for us, oh God. We want the truth of your word, oh God. And we want to walk secure in who you are, oh God. And we know that if we can walk secure in who you are, we can become who you have called us forth to be. Oftentimes, we lack the security in you, oh Father God, because we have rebelled against you. And in rebelling against you, we feel like you have the right to retaliate against us, oh God. But on this morning, we thank you for forgiving us. On this morning, we thank you, oh God, that you don't take delight and releasing judgment against us, oh God. But you take delight in restoring us. You are the God who, who says that if we call upon you, if we humble ourselves before you, if we seek your face and, and turn from our wicked ways, that then you will hear from heaven and heal the land, oh God. Lord, we know without a shadow of a doubt that because you are the God who wants to heal us, because you are the God who wants to restore us, because you are the God makes a way out of nowhere you want to do something new on our behalf and you want to do something new in us oh god and so we are asking in the name of jesus that every place in our soul where we have um thought that you wanted to get us back oh god we are asking that you heal us in that place we have encountered people oh father god who after a, a certain amount of time oh god <clears throat> they have waged war against us when we felt like uh, they told us that they had forgiven us, oh God. But we bless you, oh God, that you are not like people. You are not like man. There are some in the midst who are struggling to engage with God for who he is because of your experience with people. 
you have wronged a person in the past and they have said, oh, I forgive you. But somewhere down the line, they have uh, waged a, a, a different kind of warfare against you. They have c come um, to um, antagonize you mentally and they have intentionally engaged in activities in order to harm you. And so because of your experience personally, you feel like God has that same character. But there is nothing wicked in God. The word of God tells us that there's no shadow or turning in him. It is symbolic of the truth of the matter that there's not a place for darkness to be in God because he has no darkness in him. There is not the ability for darkness to reside in God because he himself is light. He himself, it, it, it gives us a picture of his throne and what that looks like and how um, his throne also demonstrates the, the light and the glory of who he is. And so on this morning, oh God, we are asking that you touch our hearts in places and spaces where people have vindicated themselves against us, where people have taken out vengeance and wrath and anger and have worked all deceitful a manner of wickedness against us, oh God, and where we are, are, are still holding that in our souls, where we are containing that in the files of our soul, and we are asking in the master name of Jesus for healing to set in in this place, oh God. Heal the very souls of your people on this morning, oh God. Heal the very souls of your people on this morning, oh God, that we would be able to walk in the truth that you are not vindictive, oh God. You are not a vindictive God, but you are the God who takes delight in restoring your people when we know how to engage with you. And so on this morning, we are asking you to rewrite the code in us, oh God. We are asking you to show us where we have been fear-filled, oh God, because we have not boldly come before your throne of grace. The, the reason as a blood-bought believer that you can come boldly before the throne of grace is because you believe in the price that was paid on the cross for you. Oftentimes we don't realize that we don't actually believe what Jesus did. We say we believe it. We say we understand what that meant, what it means for him to be the propitiation for our sin. We say we understand what it means to have a God who left uh, the, the beauty of heaven to come down to the squalor of earth. But the truth of the matter is until we fully get a picture of what was purchased on the cross, we will always remain a people who are unable to be bold when we come before God. Not that we are bold in our sin because that's foolishness, right? But that we are bold in his salvation. We are bold in his word. We're bold in the provision that he sent for us in order to secure our destiny in him. We are bold when he says that he will forgive us of our sins. We are bold when he tells us to confess so that we can be restored to right relationship. We will boldly come before the throne of grace and say, listen, I messed up. And you have given me the ability to rise above sin because your word says that he who sins is of Satan. And I don't want to be of Satan, oh God. I want to be of you. And so teach me how to allow your DNA to impact me so my life can be carried out in a certain way. We, we have to have that level of boldness where we can come before the throne of grace and confront what's looking to, to kill us. Oftentimes we're not taught how to confront the darkness in our own souls, but when we are bold enough to come before the throne of grace, we are able to confront what is looking to take us out, what is looking to cause us to be counterfeits in the earth realm. We weren't meant to look like anybody else and oftentimes we are counterfeiting engaging um, in, in areas that weren't assigned to us because we don't understand how to come boldly before the throne of grace. We don't understand how to obtain mercy from our Savior. We don't understand how to engage in conversation that will convert us. We have to be a people who are converted. We have to be a people who understand that how we used to be was corrupted. And so we have to leave that corrupted state and enter into the continual uh, a state of being ever uh, transformed in God when Jesus told Peter to be converted he said when you are converted go and strengthen your brother Peter was the boldest one out there and, and even when he was wrong in the New Testament in the book of Acts he was still bold right he was still bold after after he was rebuked because he understood I'm not that old person that I used to be and so on this morning as you take your life back what you can do is you can shed your old identifiers and you can shed your old mindsets and you can shed the opposition 
disposition and you can shed the disposition that you used to have and you can step into the newness that belongs to you. You can step into the place where you've been called to remain, right? Because when we enter into the place of, of Jesus Christ, when we stand in him, because the word says that we are enthroned in him, it tells us that we are to abide in him and he'll abide in us. When we enter into that place of continual abiding, we can be a people who remain. That no matter what we experience, we still um, live life, right? Not just in a state of surviving, but in a place of thriving, in a place of flourishing, in a place of triumph, right? Because we are a people who understand how to live in God. And so God, we ask in the master name of Jesus that every place in our soul that is causing us not to be converted, let it be destroyed in the master name of Jesus. Let fire fall from heaven and consume it, oh God. Let every one of our enemies, oh Father God, that is using us as a puppet in this season, let them become a puppet themselves, oh God. We even now smash their altars and we cut off their heads in the name of Jesus, oh God. We even now call for, for them to die in the master name of Jesus. We say leave no trace of them, oh God. Uh, block them out like the Amalekites in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we bless you, oh God, that their name will not be found in any books, oh Father God, but that they will be utterly destroyed in the name of Jesus. That we will be a people who are free from them, oh Father God, and we will not be rebels any longer we repent oh god for priding ourselves on being rebellious oh god for laughing and mocking the stories that were told oh god we shut it down in the name of jesus that every impurity in the depths of our soul that would look for ways to to bask in nonsense let it be destroyed oh god that we would be a people who understand that you are a holy god you are a righteous god and you are a pure god and you don't laugh at wickedness so we ourselves will no longer laugh at wickedness we even ask in the name of jesus that you purify us from witchcraft ways oh father god for uh, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft oh father god and we ask in the name of Jesus that every ounce of us that want to be witches, oh God, let it die in the name of Jesus, oh God. We speak to witchcraft and we say, hear the voice of God. You break out of our lives and you break in half in the name of Jesus, never to return to us again. We say every seed of witchcraft be destroyed and uprooted in the name of Jesus. We say um, every deposit from witchcraft, you are ineffective in the name of Jesus and we just call ourselves free to serve Jesus Christ with every ounce of who we are every stumbling block die in the name of Jesus we even now declare and decree that we can Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and we say every witchcraft antichrist way that is looking to bind us you be bound yourself in the name of Jesus for we have been given the keys to the kingdom that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and we declare and decree since you have already been kicked out of heaven, we are kicking you out of us as the earthen vessels. We are kicking you out of our uh, territories. We're kicking you off of our jobs. We are kicking you out of our businesses. We are kicking you out of our marriages in the master name of Jesus. And we are calling ourselves a people who are free, free to live in the truth of God's word. We say every enemy of our soul that is creating dark places where we are unable to access what belongs to us die in the name of jesus we even now say oh god what you promised us would be resurrected we are thanking you in advance for its resurrection because we will not live in the realm of rebellion we thank you oh god for the truth of your word reigning supreme let every other man be a liar oh god lord we thank you that as we press in and as we pray in this season oh god we will see the newness that belongs to us we break ourselves loose from the lies of hell, oh God. We break ourselves loose, oh God, from the from the pity of pain, oh God. And we bring ourselves into the revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that eye has not seen and ear has not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men which you have in store for us. Every enemy of our soul that has planted tares of rebellion in us while we slept, we even now call you dead in the name of Jesus. We call those tares shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus. We even now choke them out at their root up 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 in the name of jesus we say every ounce of backwardsness that is looking to bring us back to a rebellious state die in the name of jesus we declare and decree that we will not be a people who are tethered to our past but we are anchored to god who is our future and so we thank you oh god for being our anchor we thank you for being our exceeding great reward we thank you for being our shield and our buckler oh god we thank you that no longer do we live in the realm of rejection no longer do we um stay in a place of abandonment no longer do we tarry in trauma oh father god but we pursue the passions that belong to us in you oh father god for it is in you that we live move and have our very being oh god in every place where we're Rebellion wants to 
set traps for us in the future we even now call those traps inoperable in the name of jesus we even now render rebellion useless in the kingdom of satan and we say angels on assignment unto us take them to the abyss where they will be tormented until the day that jesus christ returns they will not be reassigned a position we declare it and decree it as sons of god in the earth realm for all creation is waiting for our manifestation they are waiting for us to take our rightful place and today we take our rightful places as those who are rendering a verdicts against darkness oh father god we will not allow darkness to rule and reign where we have been called forth we shut it down in the name of jesus oh father god we even now send angels before us on today angels on assignment angels with messages oh god angels oh father god of war we even now declare and decree we win on today oh father god we say open our books in the master name of jesus and we say etch upon our souls the words that have been penned in destiny concerning us oh God, anything that the enemy is looking to get us to carry out today, we call it useless in the name of Jesus and we replace it with your word, oh God. Anything that our souls want us to be entangled in on today, oh God, we say not so in the master name of Jesus. We say let the wickedness of the wicked come to the, an end and we say let the wickedness in our soul be devoured in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree that we will not be a people who are subject to the enemy, but we cause the enemy to be subject to us from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force we are kings in the kingdom of god we are under the sovereign jesus christ and we will not allow the enemy to assail and to assault um the king's dominion we will not allow him to come against the plans of our maker and we declare and decree that we rise up with sword and spear and we say oh god what you have entrusted us with what you have called us to steward we will steward well we will be a people who are trustworthy oh father god and we look even now um, for your edicts uh, to be released, oh God. But we ourselves begin to release edicts concerning our destinies. And so just begin to speak over yourself on today concerning what you want to see God do for you, what you are going to uh, partner with God in doing. Lord, we thank you in the master name of Jesus that today is a day of victory. We thank you for every miracle sign and wonder that is manifesting. We thank you for every mind-blowing testimony, oh God. We thank you for the miraculous showing up. We thank you for new contacts and new contracts, oh God. Lord, we thank you for witty inventions and good ideas, oh Father God. We thank you for God ideas in the master name of Jesus. We thank you for completion of work that you are the author and the finisher in every project, oh God, that is hot started, oh Father God. We call it done in the name of Jesus, oh God. We will go back to the place where you last spoke to us, oh Father God, and we will finish what we started in the master name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we agree with you, O oh Father God, and we will not be short-sighted. We bless you, O oh God, for the truth of your word. Let every other man be a liar. We thank you that frustration fails in the name of Jesus. We thank you that failure fails in the name of Jesus. We thank you that sabotage has become sabotaged and it fails in the name of Jesus. We say destruction, you are destroyed, and we wrap them up in, 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 in the yoke of bondage that they tried to wrap us up in. And we say angels on assignment unto us, drag them to the abyss, drag them to the abyss and torture them with the blood of jesus in the name of jesus we say oh god leave them in a cage in 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 hell oh god until you return in the master name of jesus where the worm does not die let them be consumed oh god Lord, we bless you, O oh Father God, for what you're doing in our hearts and in our minds, for how you are bringing us into a well-watered place. We thank you that since we are willing and obedient, we eat the good of the land. And will we have not been willing and obedient, kill it in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that we will be a people who are raised up in accordance with the truth of your word, that we would no longer be bound by darkness, O oh God, but we would even now participate in light, O oh God. We usher in light because we ourselves are light. In you, we see light, O oh God, and so we rest in in you oh god we rule in you we abide in you on this morning oh father god lord we trust you oh father god in every place in our soul where doubt has crept in confusion unbelief and every wicked and evil work we say suffocate in the name of jesus we say you will no longer have the opportunity to breathe out your wicked um uh, verdicts against us we say no more in the name of jesus we declare and decree that we will be free to serve Jesus Christ and breathe in the breath of the Spirit in every breath that we take in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that every enemy of our soul that is looking to ravish us is ravished itself on this morning, oh Father God. And so we just thank you for peace, peace and more peace, oh God. We thank you 
for the abundant life that belongs to us. And we thank you for the directions that you are giving us. Lord, we just thank you for every strategy that comes from heaven, oh God. For every scroll that is unlocked, oh God. For every book that is delivered, oh God. Lord, we thank you that no longer will we vacillate. We will just do what you've requested in the name of Jesus. There are some who are rebelling. Um, there were instructions given to you about a book to write. And you have been rebelling for a long time against writing this book because you are afraid of what writing this book will do. And so on this morning, we just repent for the rebellion deep down in the depths of our souls, oh Father God, as you have given us instructions and then we get frustrated concerning where we remain. Lord, we even now ask, oh Father God, that you would pardon our foolishness, oh God, and that you would show us the highway of holiness, that we would live in that place to be fools no more, oh God. Lord, we just thank you just for uh, freedom, 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 oh Father God, and that as you stretch us in this season, oh God, we won't be afraid, oh Father God. Of what you are pulling us into, oh God. What you are, 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 are forming us for, oh Father God. And where you are directing us. We just thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you that eye has not seen and ear has not heard. And you have entered into the hearts of men what you have in store for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, I pray that this prayer on this morning has blessed you. Um, and that you will be back tomorrow morning at um, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as we continue to press in and pray. If you have not pre-ordered your book, go ahead and do that. Facebook, click the link in the bio. You will be getting your books um, this week, and I'm very, very excited about it. If you are on Clubhouse, you can go to Instagram or to my website and order your book um, for that as well but we will be continuing um to pray through this uh book on this morning um as we continue on this series and so we're going to be in it for 30 days we are on day seven um as well and so um as you go throughout the day today one of the things that i want to challenge you with is that thing that you are believing god for um, that you're taking back, right? I want you to go to him and say, okay, this is day seven, dad. And so uh, for these these days that we have gone through, we've looked at these particular areas concerning what uh, I, I need overturned concerning this particular thing. Um, what specifically do you need me to do concerning what we have already covered in order to be in alignment with where we're going with this? And just ask him to give you insight into that He'll give you a set of instructions to follow through and do and make sure you do them, right? When Daddy God releases the information, it may seem simple, uh, but it is mighty. So when he tells you what to do, go ahead and follow through and do that thing because he wants you to partner with him in taking your life back, right? And so make sure you do that. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Facebook. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, send it to me. I want to press in. I want to pray with you. I want to rejoice with you. If you are on the clubhouse and you have a prayer request or a praise report, I want to um, pray with you. I want to rejoice with you so you can raise your hand. But Facebook, I'll be back at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you are just joining for the series, um, the previous six days, including um, this one, so all seven days, are on uh, Facebook and they are also on the YouTube. If you um, do not have a Facebook and you are on Clubhouse um, and you have a YouTube, you can go back and watch um, all of the previous prayers. And then I, I do have some other um, teachings and prayers on my YouTube as well. And so I am going to end the Facebook broadcast, but if you are on the Clubhouse and you have a prayer request or a praise report, come on.